Hello, everybody. My name is Gergana, but I usually go by Jerry because that's a little bit easier to pronounce. And I work for BBD. I work in the R&D department at BBD. And a lot of people usually ask me what we do in the R&D department. And the plain, boring answer is we train the BBD developers, we do some specialized consulting, and of course we do a whole lot of research. But that's not all we do at BBD. We also do some really cool stuff, like building Twitter photo booths and um, racing cars with microservices and, of course, programming AstroMake droids. And that's why I'm here today, because I really like speaking about things, especially smart things. And everything is smart, right? But we can go further, because we are living in the future. Sorry, I'm just going to move my mouse because it's bothering me. <laughs> but we are living in the future, right? Think about how many smart devices you have on you right now. I have at least three, and that's not including all the stuff on that table over there. And we can go further than this. We can make absolutely everything smart. How? With the physical web. What is the physical web? Well. The physical web is a movement created by Google towards moving to smarter things. It can be kind of broken down into three ideas. So the first one is sharing information. Then there's making smarter things and connecting to those things. I'm going to go into a bit of detail on each of those. In terms of sharing information, we have these things called beacons. They use Bluetooth low energy. The ones in that picture over there are Edison beacons. They were created by Google. They are supported natively on Android, and they require an app for iOS. That's a whole political debate that I'm not going to go into right now. But um, they never used to require an app on iOS. It changed recently. But anyway, they use Bluetooth low energy to bro broadcast the URL over over Bluetooth to your, to your Android device. And you get a notification that would look something like this, as long as you are listening for that notification. So what does listening mean? Well, listening means that your Bluetooth is turned on, that your location is turned on, or your GPS, and also that you're looking at your phone. So it will not pu push random notifications to your phone while your phone's sitting in your pocket. It will only do it when your phone is actually awake. So uh, that notification there is to my GitHub account. It's an example I used in a previous talk where I had a beacon broadcasting it. I don't have it on right now. But other examples you could use this for is things like um, a smart dog tag. So your dog gets lost, and someone finds them. They pull out their phone, see the URL, see your information, and find you and return your dog for, to you. A more practical example in terms of making things smarter is our vending machines here at BBD. So our vending machines work by our access cards. You walk up to the vending machine, swipe your access card, and you get whatever you like. Now, I don't know how people's brains work, but I tend to forget my access card at home a lot, at least once a week, which is probably good for my health, but I think Mike and my other colleagues are getting quite irritated with me when I asked them for their access card so I can get snacks. So I don't have this same problem with my phone. I never forget my phone at home. If I had my phone, I could have a beacon on the vending machine that pushes a URL to my phone. I open the URL on my phone, pick my Coke, and that would push a notification back to a server somewhere. The server would then push a notification to the vending machine and I would get whatever I wanted. Now, this is all really cool, but the one thing to note here is only that blue arrow, that first thing I spoke about, is the physical web. Everything else is plain old web stuff, you know, a server, which requires the vending machine to know about a server, to have some sort of connection to the server. And that's where the last bit of the physical web comes in, with make, connecting to smart things. And this is called Web Bluetooth. With Web Bluetooth, I could have the same vending machine that pushes a notification to my phone, 
But now my phone can connect back to the vending machine, to the Bluetooth enabled vending machine, and tell it directly what exactly I want and push back straight to the vending machine. Web Bluetooth is really cool because um, most of us here are web developers. We are here because we like JavaScript. And Web Bluetooth is a JavaScript API which allows us to connect to Bluetooth devices. Now, before we used to have to have a native app that we download from some sort of Play Store or App Store in order to connect to Bluetooth. Now, we can do it from a website. And I'll show you that example just now. But before I show you an example, I need to tell you a little bit about the theory of Bluetooth and how Bluetooth devices actually connect and how they talk to each other. So um, Bluetooth low energy is what web Bluetooth uses. It, the reason it uses low energy is because, uh, well, firstly, it's low energy. So uh, it means that those little beacons which have watch-like batteries in them, very small batteries, uh, can last for years and you know you don't need to replace them. Then the other reason they use it is because it's quite well supported. Most of the modern phones these days support low energy Bluetooth. Then the next thing is GAT or the generic, generic attributes. The generic attributes are a hierarchical data structure for Bluetooth low energy devices. There's specific and mandatory for all Bluetooth low energy. And they're based on the attribute protocol, which is a way for exchanging data between Bluetooth devices. And so a generic attribute profile, every Bluetooth device has a generic attribute profile. And this profile consists of one or more services. The services are what define the behavior of the device. So for example, a service would be a battery service, or what we'll see in the demo is a heart rate service. Then these services contain references to other services on the same profile, as well as one or more characteristics. The characteristics are what define the functions of the device. So a battery service would have a battery level characteristic. So that is its type. The battery level would be its type. Its value would be whatever the battery value, uh, level value is. And then the properties and permissions are what define what we can do with that value. So some values you can set, some values you can only read, things like that. And who can access those things. The other important bit of theory I need to talk to you about is something called bitwise maths. Who remembers bitwise maths? Anyone? Not really anyone. Okay, uh, have a few people. Okay, well, I didn't remember it either until I started doing this research, but it's not, it's not that hard, okay? I will, I will, expl I will explain with an easy example. So if we have the number 22 in base 10, we convert that to the number 10110 in base two, and we add that with the number three in base 10, which is equivalent to 1, 1 in base 2. We just pad it in the front with zeros so we can do the whole number. What we do is we start on the right-hand side and we work that way. So 0 and 1 is 0, 1 and 1 is 1, 1 and 0 is 0, it's all the way, all the way to the front. So we get the number 1, 0 in base 2 which is equivalent to the number two in base 10. So we're going to see some bitwise maths like this in the demo. Uh, there are a whole bunch of other operators you can do, uh, and is just one of the simple ones we're gonna use, but you can do or and shift and unshift, and yeah, those are the ones I know. <laughs> oh, the ones I've used recently. So enough talk, let's, let's get to this really cool demo. Um, what I'm going to need for, uh, as soon as I finish my demo, is a volunteer with either an Android device or one who is willing to download something called Web Bluetooth Browser on their iPhone device, uh, on their Apple device. iPhone device. 
<laughs> anyway, my demo is going to be on this heart rate monitor over here. So how many people here have fitness devices? Okay, what, what kinds? I have a Garmin. What, what kinds do we have? Anyone? Fitbit. Cool. So uh, how do you guys feel about the app that you got with your fitness device? Yeah, you, that's usually the response I get when, when, when I ask that question. Yeah, so uh, I really don't like my Garmin app. It has a lot of bugs in it. It doesn't always sync my watch. And the biggest problem with it is it doesn't always sync with Vitality. And that's important because I need my free smoothies every week. <laughs> So what we're going to do is use a library called Angular Web Bluetooth. Angular Web Bluetooth was created by a guy called Wasim Chega. He, um, he pretty much took the Web Bluetooth API and wrapped it for Angular, and wrapped all of the promises into observables, so we have a little bit less callback hell that you get with normal promises. And it's quite a cool library. But, and also, we all know that JavaScript's really good at maths, right? Uh, so you can do all your, all your VO2 max calculations and your average heart rates and your calories burnt once, once you've connected it with your Angular app. <laughs> but anyway, let me stop talking and start showing you code. Um, can you guys see or should I zoom in a bit? Okay. So I've created an app here with the Angular CLI. The parts I'm not going to show you is I've included a few images, which you'll see, and then the CSS, because Mike always shouts at me when I say this, but no one likes to talking about CSS. <laughs> <laughs> but what we're going to do is start inside the, let me just close that part, the app module. So uh, first thing we're going to do is import. And we're going to import the web Bluetooth. No, that's the wrong one. No, sorry. <laughs> that one. Web Bluetooth module. Third <laughs> time lucky. The void Bluetooth module from the Angular Bluetooth module. So um, I've loaded the Angular Bluetooth module in here manually because uh, Wasim Chigam has not updated it to Angular 5 yet. So I updated it for him, but I haven't been brave enough to submit the pull request yet. Do so, it. <laughs> so it's just sitting sitting in my. In <laughs> uh, Cool. <laughs> Live pull requests to one of the famous GDs. <laughs> anyway, so we add the web Bluetooth module there, and we also need to add it to our imports. There. Then the next thing we're going to do is create a new service using the Angular CLI. and we're going to call it heart rate. This service is what's going to store pretty much all of our functions for the heart rate monitor. So connecting to it, getting the data from it, um, and streaming values from it as well. There we go, heart rate service created. We have to import in here. Bluetooth core, which is also from that same web Bluetooth module. And I'm going to delete the default constructor and just scaffold a new one. Cool. This constructor has. Uh, injected into it Bluetooth core, and it has two private variables. Now, one thing I forgot to tell you about was uh, how those attributes in the get profile work. So the attributes in the get profile, the services and the characteristics, all have to have a type. 
And that type is defined by a universally unique identifier, so a UUID. Usually that UUID is 128 bits long, but you have some standard ones that everything recognizes, like in this case, we're using heart rate and heart rate measurement. Those are the standard ones that every Bluetooth device can recognize. All right, and when you create, so certain devices, the reason I'm using this Bluetooth heart rate monitor instead of my watch, certain devices lock down their characteristics and services. So for example, I tried looking at stuff in my Garmin watch, and they have all their own custom attributes. So um, that way you can't really figure out and hack their device. But the plainer ones, uh, the, the older ones actually, uh, usually have predefined ones, or uh, with some of them you can find them online. You can d define them. But Garmin has this locked down, so I couldn't hack my watch. Anyway, so once we have our service and our characteristic that we're going to look for, we can scaffold some methods. Our service is going to have three methods. Get BOE device, stream values, and get heart rate. To get the BOE device, all we have to do is call one of the observables from the Bluetooth call module. All this is going to do is you'll see when we use it in the component just now, it's going to check whether our device is currently online or not. There is a, a way to uh, ask it to reconnect to a device if it loses a connection, but it actually uh, hasn't been wrapped in the, in the Angular Web Bluetooth, so there's another pull request. <laughs> um, then in the stream values, this is actually one really nice uh, wrapper that, uh, that's in this module because it's very easy to get the values. Um, using the normal JavaScript API, it's a little bit more difficult to stream the values continuously from the device. With this one, you just call stream values, and then you can map your value. And we're going to create a private method now called this.pass heart rate and pass that value. So let's add that private method at the bottom here. Okay. So pass heart rate is where we're using that bitwise mats I was showing you earlier. But the reason we need it is because we get these unsigned integer arrays returned to us from the Bluetooth device. And in order to figure out what that value is, we need to do some bitwise maths. So what you're seeing there is we're getting the unsigned integer 8-bit array and checking is it actually an 8-bit array or not. If it is, then uh, that's what this part here does, with ends it with one, and that would return one or zero. So that would tell us whether it's stored in the 8-bit one or the 16-bit one, and return the value for us. Then the last method we need to implement is the actual get heart rate method. This is the complicated one. So I'm gonna add it in here, and then explain it. Let me close this. Okay, so this calls a whole bunch of observables and using RxJS it, uh, and merge map, it moves on to the next observable and then the next one and so on. So firstly, it filters. So this is an important part uh, which I'm going to cover a bit more in the security section, but you have to specify a filter for the devices you'll be searching for. We are searching for any services that provide a heart, uh, heart rate. So any heart rate monitor in the room, we're going to scan for it and hopefully find it. Then we merge map. 
With that service, we get the heart rate primary service as the primary service. Once we get the primary service, we can get its characteristic, which is our heart rate characteristic. Then once we have our characteristic, we can read the value from it, and then using our map, we can pass it. Now, an important thing here, and it's something that someone asked me previously, is that certain characteristics, like I said, can only be read or, uh, or written to, or either or, or both sometimes. But the heart rate characteristics can only be read. So you can't tell the heart rate monitor, this is what my heart rate is. <laughs> someone asked me if you can do that. You can't. <laughs> cool. So that's our service. Now, in our app module, we need to import the service that we created. And then add it to our providers as well. Now let's write some code inside the component. So our app component doesn't have anything in it for now. We're going to import the Bluetooth core, as well as the heart rate service. Sorry I keep quiet every now and then. I'm still not used to this whole typing and, and speaking at the same time. I'm getting there. I'm getting better at it. Cool. Once we have our heart rate service and our Bluetooth core, we can scaffold some methods in our app component. Let's first define a few private variables and our constructor. So our variables are heart rate, which is a number, which is what's going to show the value of our heart rate on the screen, whether we're connected or not, so we know whether there is a heart rate. And then we have a subscription. The subscription is there just because it's good practice to unsubscribe from your observables. And our constructor, we're just injecting the heart rate service. Then we're going to add some methods. So on init, we're going to call two methods. We're first going to get the device status, and then we're going to update the heart rate value. So here are those two methods. We haven't implemented them yet. And then on destroy, we're just going to unsubscribe from all of our observables. The get device status method looks like this. So we're calling that get BLE device from the heart rate service. We're subscribing. If device is, if the device exists, so if we have a device, it means we're connected. Otherwise, we're not connected. And this is where you would implement the retrying to connect to a device. The update heart rate val value. is going to call that stream values method in our service. The stream values will just subscribe and update the heart rate, and also does a console.log because that's just good practice. <laughs> no, I'm lying. That, the reason that it does a console.log is because I had a lot of trouble when I first started this, and it kept not updating the heart rate, and I couldn't figure out why. But then I looked in the logs, and it was updating. It just, my heart rate wasn't changing. <laughs> <laughs> and like with any console that log, you never removed it and it made its way to production. <laughs> this isn't production. <laughs> this is UAT. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's add some HTML. So I have this welcome to web Bluetooth here. I'm going to get rid of it and just add some HTML. Our HTML uh, pretty much has a header at the top with a heart rate and dash dash if our heart rate is zero or null, and then a little image of a heart that we're going to use to connect to the device. So when you click on the heart, it will sc start scanning for devices, and, but you'll see it, you'll see it. All right, and then let's implement the connect to device method in the component.
our connect to device method calls uh, get heart rate from our service and subscribes and just maps the first value of the heart rate that we first get. And that's, a, that's, our, that's our app pretty much done. Now, what I want to do is uh, show you how to deploy this app to Firebase and then show you how you can connect to my heart rate monitor. Um, so who here has used Firebase before? A few people, cool. Um, yeah, Firebase is pretty cool, especially if you're doing simple stuff like just hosting an app, uh, like a simple app like this. But um, you install Firebase tools, and then you can do something like this. Firebase init. And Firebase init walks you through the process of setting up your app. So it um, takes a little while. Hopefully the internet's not too slow today. But it gives you a few options. So all we're going to do is host our app. So I'm going to go down to hosting and select that. So um, firstly, it will ask me what project I want to associate this with. So uh, I have a project that I've already created called Heart Rate Hack. Uh, but the way you create it is you log into Firebase with your Google credentials, and you can just create a new project. And then after that, you'll be able to see it over here. So I'm just going to select that project. So uh, then what do we want as our public directory? I'm going to change this to dist, because that's where, um, when we do ng build, that's where it's going to build the project to. And yes. Uh, Cool. So uh, that's just setting the root of our app. All right. And now we need to first ng build. Hopefully, we, I haven't made any mistakes in the code, and the ng build is actually going to work. And um, yeah. So uh, who is going to volunteer to connect to the heart rate monitor? There we go. We have a volunteer. Cool. Uh, uh, what what device do you have? Uh, okay. Cool. Uh, you can also do it. I see you have a computer, uh, but you'd need Bluetooth if you were using your computer. But yeah. Um, so yeah, the previous time I did it, uh, I did this. I just showed people from my computer, but I thought it would be more cool if I showed you how easy it is to do it. So once our build is done, all we have to do is Firebase. Deploy, deploy. And they'll take everything that's in our dist folder and push it to that Firebase app. And then it will tell us, it will even tell us where it's being hosted. Cool. So uh, do you want to come up and show everyone? <laughs> cool. So if you go, just go to this URL, okay. heartrate.firebase.com. So luckily, these heart rate monitors are slightly more hackable, and I don't have to actually put it on. I can just hold it. <laughs> Firebaseapp.com. Firebase okay. Cool. It's loading. It's loading. Okay, it's Come this way. Come this way. You need to be in the, in the video. It's loaded. All right. Cool. So um, if you want to show everyone the little picture of the heart, uh, cool. And now if you just hit, hit the heart, cool. And there's the Polar H7, which is this device here. Pair, yeah. Pair. And it should start... Showing a heart rate. There we go. Yeah. Cool. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, let me show you how it works on here as well. If you can just close your browser, uh, otherwise you can't connect to this. But let's go to. Oh. 
cool. So this is what it looks like. And if I start searching for the heart rate monitor, it should show up if my Bluetooth is actually on. No, it's not. So, um, So ever since meltdown happened, <laughs> this has been happening to my Bluetooth. So, um, okay, as I explained earlier, let me explain to you why it's not working. So this is a good opportunity for learning. Um, so, um, <laughs> I'm gonna own it. <laughs> uh, so uh, this, this is an older Mac, so it doesn't have Bluetooth low energy. That's why I have to use a little USB stick to, uh, that has Bluetooth low energy. But in order to do that, I had to run a script. And every now and then when my Mac restarts, it doesn't actually uh, load the, the new the Bluetooth device. So then uh, my Bluetooth low energy, it reverts to the internal Bluetooth, which isn't low energy and therefore can't scan for the device. Yeah, so that's why it's not working. But feel free to come up. Later, once we're done, and I'll show you it working on your phone. But yeah, that was my demo. Cool. Let's move on. So, just like all of us, where Bluetooth is a mere mortal, and it has some limitations. The first thing is, as I said, only low energy. So you can only connect to low energy devices. Uh, and some, some cars and other things uh, use old school Bluetooth, which isn't low energy. And uh, you can't, so you can't hack your car. Well, I haven't been able to hack my car yet. <laughs> I'll need a newer car. Then the other thing is it only allows central connections. What does that mean? So we have Bluetooth devices can be either central or peripheral. So a central device is something like your computer or your phone, one that can connect to multiple devices at a time. A peripheral device is something like a heart rate monitor or a smart light bulb, or some, something like that that can only be connected to once. Some phones can act as peripherals. They have apps that can do that, but it's, it's a hardware feature. So only the newest, I think it's only the newest Nexus that can currently do it. And connections are only allowed from central to peripheral. You can't have central to central or peripheral to peripheral because a peripheral device can't actually initiate a connection to a Bluetooth device. So what this means is web Bluetooth only allows central connections, which means a web page can't talk to another web page yet. They're still working on it. Then uh, there's a few security concerns and a few support concerns, as, as you saw the support concerns. <laughs> But um, the security concerns, all right. So um, if you think about it, it's kind of scary. You can, uh, you can push URLs to people walking past. You, you can uh, control their Bluetooth devices with a website. There's actually a really good article which uh, I'm, I have on my GitHub which compares the security of web Bluetooth to native apps Bluetooth. And um, it's actually, it's, it's really interesting that uh, how many security issues there are with native apps Bluetooth as well. Um, but some of the things they've done to make sure that web Bluetooth is a bit more secure is that everything has to be accessed over HTTPS only. So I had to deploy it to Firebase because that's HTTPS. You can also use GitHub pages because of, I think that's also HTTPS. Um, you can't just scan for any devices, any Bluetooth devices near you. You have to provide some sort of filter. So I was filtering by heart, heart rate monitors, but you have to provide a filter. Now, there are ways to get around that um, because you can filter by name prefix. So technically, you could filter by anything starting with A, B, C, D. Uh, but, um, you know, you can't just scan for people's devices. You can only connect once. So it's a peripheral device that you're connecting to. So you only can only connect the one time. It, um, so what that means is when, uh, 
when he was connected to the heart rate monitor, I wouldn't be able to connect to it at the same time until he closes his browser. So if your watch is connected to your heart rate monitor, don't worry, no one else can connect to your heart rate monitor and, watch your, uh, and see your heart rate. And then the last one is that a user interaction is required. So we had to have that little heart there that initi initiates the scan for devices. You can't just go to a website and suddenly it connects to all of your devices and starts controlling everything that's Bluetooth in your house. So that's also good. <laughs> and then the support. Okay, so Web Bluetooth is only supported on a Linux kernel 3.19 or with Blues 5.41 installed. Mac OS, has, you have to have Yosemite or later. Windows, you have to have 8.1 or later, but uh, there are certain of the web Bluetooth features that aren't supported on 8.1 either, so it's just better to, if, if you're using Windows to try with 10. Android, you have to have 6 or later, and then iOS has no official support yet. But I've put a little asterisk there because um, the keywords there are official and yet. So uh, official because uh, doesn't, it isn't supported in Safari and in Chrome on iOS, but it is supported in a little app called Web Bluetooth Browser, uh, which you can download from the App Store. And then yet, because uh, when I started all of this research in September last year, uh, it wasn't supported in Windows either, and now it is. So uh, they're busy working on it. They are actively working on it. So we're hoping that they will eventually support it. That's it. Um, if you want to have a look at the code that I wrote and uh, all of my references and things, you can go to my GitHub account. Otherwise, find me on Twitter. Thank you. <laughs>